Welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Uh, we're just getting going for this, this morning. Um, we'll kind of show you what I got loaded up today and then we're gonna get on the road. I'm, the sun's been up maybe 20 minutes or so, so I'm just a touch behind, but I wanted to make sure I had everything kind of situated in my truck before I leave the house. So I don't want another uh, mink box fiasco from yesterday where I had six boxes, but only four of my traps would fit in the boxes. So I got uh, seven mink boxes loaded. Uh, every trap I made sure will fit. And then I actually brought one extra trap just in case. And that one will fit in all these boxes. Uh, I got my chicken I'm using for bait. Um, I put out a couple 220s yesterday, the two I had in my truck here. So I threw a couple more in. I do have a spot where I might be able to get those out. Oh, I need H stands. So I'm not quite done, but uh, we're also gonna set a couple beaver traps today. We're gonna set a couple beaver traps today. So I uh, threw in, I got one foothold in there and the drowning wire for it. And then I have a 330 with my little floating V uh, that you guys can maybe see in some of the last uh, spring trapping videos from last year. Um, we're gonna put that those two in that same Sioux that I uh, trapped this spring. I was there yesterday. I don't know that there's a lot of beaver sign there, but we're going to uh, give that a shot. I did talk to the landowner that owns around where that beaver house was at, uh, and there is kind of the abandoned farm place there where nobody lives. Uh, he gave me permission to trap all that, so I might be able to get my uh, beaver sets a little closer to the actual you know on the closer to the beaver house i'm not gonna be able to get to the beaver house where it was at last year um the fields are way too muddy to even think about getting that close and i'm not gonna walk that far over there to get to it but close to where i can drive i can put them on you know the road comes up i can put them on both sides of the road instead of just only on one side of the road uh, we're gonna probably load that place up so it's gonna be beaver sets muskrat sets raccoon sets and a mink box set in there uh, if I'm going there to check, I might as well be checking, catching everything. Oh, and a coyote set. I'm going to put at least one coyote set there. Um, yeah, if I'm going there to check, I might as well do a full multi-species check right there. Pretty much everything I can trap, I'm going to have sets for right there. It's going to take me probably an hour or more to get all that set up there. But once it's set, checking it goes quick. So I'm going to try and kind of hurry. I know as much as you can uh, through the line and make sure I got plenty of time for that. Even if I get home late tonight, um, I'm gonna get that all set up. I may dink around and try and put another coyote set or two in. We'll have to uh, see. It's a little bit chillier today. It's like 26 degrees out here, but there's almost no wind. You guys can maybe see my breath. It's kind of blowing any which way today. It's supposed to be real light winds. Hopefully that didn't freeze my sous up too bad. And hopefully the muskrats moved around last night. Uh, I reworded almost all my muskrat sets yesterday. Made sure obviously they're all working. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully that pays dividends with maybe an extra handful of uh, muskrats over what I've been catching. It's going to be tough to make it to 100 if I'm only catching 7 each day. Uh, yeah, so the beaver gear's inside. I got it setting in the back seat. And I got the mink stuff here. Uh, the reason why I got the mink stuff here, they'll be some of the first stuff as soon as I start checking muskrat sets. When I get to a slough where I didn't put a mink box yesterday, I'll be dropping mink boxes on. Basically, hopefully every slough I stop at will have a mink, mink box by, or most of the bigger ones, let's put it that way, will have a mink box there. Beaver gear will be almost the very last stop of the day, so that's why I stuck that stuff inside the truck. So if I start making catches, I don't have that stuff in my way back here, but said I did put in about 10 more sets some um, basically every species yesterday um, one rack or one coyote set where I had the badger I added I put in a few extra raccoon sets a couple muskrat sets I did put a set that's kind of specifically designed for otter but I imagine I could catch raccoons and stuff in there too uh, so we'll see you never know that'd be a heck of a catch but all right guys so we're uh, starting off the day on a non too bad of a note. Uh, this is the fifth coyote set. 
and I got five raccoon sets checked and I got a catch here um, this is the same set so here's a little barn over here that I have dog proofs around that I don't catch any I was brave again today and drove out here the fields are pretty hard and actually have dried up quite a bit even since the other day so I drove around the one wheel wet spot and I had no problems getting out here I don't know another day or two I may uh, be driving around on a few more fields try and get a few more coyote sets in uh, again what I got is just a fence line it runs and then there's a big slough out here where all these trees are and you can see right here I got a nice red fox he's got no white tip on his tail though which is kind of a bummer he's got a real poofy nice tail but he doesn't have the white tip on the end but he looks like he's missing like three inches off the end of his tail because a red fox's tail is darn near as big as his whole body so that's kind of how much how I could tell about how much he's missing so yeah I had a raccoon in this trap uh, two days ago and today I got a nice red fox here so uh, typically I think this is the first canine I've actually caught along this fence line I typically catch them on the fence line that's on the other side over here by these trees and I don't have a set over there yet just because it's so wet but and then to top it all off I left my phone at home I know exactly where it is it's sitting on a chair in the basement so I don't have my trapping app so I don't know exactly what bait and where I had here I'm gonna put what I thought was here and then uh, that's what's going to be here for this time i don't like doing that i mean i think i've explained that in the past i want to put the same smells here that's already here but i'm going to backtrack about 10 miles home and get my phone because one if i run into trouble somewhere like driving across this field i didn't realize i didn't have it until i literally stopped and then i realized i don't have my phone so if i get stuck or something i can't call anybody so uh or have trouble so i'm going to run back home get my phone and then we'll get back into checking the rest of the line so it'll probably be half an hour 45 minutes before I turn you guys back on which kind of sucks because I want to add some sets to days but it is what it is well I don't know we all have our blonde moments don't we so I drove all the way home thought I knew exactly where my phone was I thought it was sitting on a chair in the basement wasn't there Spent like 10 minutes frantically searching around the house, anywhere where I went this morning, only to not find it. I took off my Carhartt jacket because I am I was overheated after I caught that fox and I'm like, well, I ain't going to need it today. It's already up to 28 and there's like zero wind. You can see there. the only ripples are the ripples I just made walking in here. There is some ice. It's out about this far out. I'm not real worried a couple on the other side have ice around them I'm not even gonna bust it it's literally just enough so there's a skim there it's supposed to warm up today like into the 40s tonight is supposed to get like in the, around like 25 I guess but then it's supposed to be above freezing for like five or six days so they're gonna open up most of these sloughs are only gonna freeze a little around the edges if it looks like there's a lot of ice around them I might bust them I might actually pull a few too today um, so anyway I get all the way home and I check all that stuff I checked the pockets of my car hard it wasn't in there well they got holes in it so I'm like well shit did it fall out of my pocket here to come find out I had stuck it in my pocket on my waders I took it out of my pants pocket when I was in my basement I thought I set it on that chair put my waders on and I must have stuck it in my pocket so I had it all along so I just wasted like better than a half an hour driving home and coming back that's life of a trapper I guess uh, so I got a pole set here I got a 110 here I don't know if you guys will be able to see them or not but right here you could see a muskrat so I checked there's four on the other end and one across the road uh, this is the set that I caught the very first one in the other day oh look at that right there right shoot he's right here there's a muskrat just popped up right there he ain't really moving so it's hard to show you he's right here yeah he just come popping up right there I know there's muskrats around that's the that's the worst part I've been, literally been seeing them like by my sets you know within 10 feet of them sometimes and I'm just not catching them this year like I have other years 
I don't know if I've wised them up. These are wise ones from last year or what, but I don't know. You would think you would catch one now and then, but all right, we'll show you this guy. Nice big rat again. Caught in the same set that I caught the very first one in the first day that I was setting. And that one that was just out here looked like a nice rat too, so. Well, I don't know, we're off to a little better start than yesterday. But this slew here, last year I caught a couple right away out of this slew and I think I only had eight sets in here. Now I got 12 this year. Uh, but I went like the first day I caught a few, like two or three, four, I don't remember the exact number. But then I know I went like two or three days in a row where I had nothing. And then I went a couple days in a row, I had like seven in every, in out of like eight traps here. So I know there's muskrats here. I mean, you can see, you know, it's a good size suit. It actually goes around the corner and then there's a big bay over there. You know, so I'm only trapping just the edge of it here. So I'm a little surprised that I ain't caught anything, but, and then I'm trying these new brackets this year, but I don't know why, but it's catching. So the 110 isn't releasing out of this side of it. The side the muskrats are in, for some reason is holding them in there and then they're hanging there. I'd rather them fall off and drown, and then they're out of sight as well, because I, I could see this guy from the road sticking there, but. All right, we'll get this guy remade. Day's not looking too bad. All right, guys, I'm basically just to the next slough here. Uh, I got a culvert goes under the road here. On the other side of the road, I actually got a colony trap stuffed in this culvert, and I wasn't real sure if anything could even go through there because it just seems like when I push my colony trap in, it's almost like it's plugged up with stuff, the culvert is, but my door was bowed way out like that enough that the, whatever was in there pushed the door, bent the door out, slid it all the way out far enough that they could get out. So I don't know what's doing that. That's the second one I've had like that this year. I've never really had issues with that in the past, so I don't know if a mink got in there and pushed the door open, but to have it done twice in one year seems a little odd. Uh, I've got the ice busted around these sets, so I got a foothold here and a 110 just on the other side of these uh, cattails. But right here, I showed you this yesterday. There was this little hole going, and I can hear the water running into this culvert on this end. And I actually think the culvert's like, you know, it's all completely under the water, like right down here. But this is running into the culvert. I can hear gurgling water. So I put a 110 in front of there and bingo. Caught me a nice big muskrat. I mean, big, big muskrat there. So he kind of knocked the hole closed just a little. I'm going to open it kind of back up again. And we're going to put my trap right back in the front of that thing again. So yeah, it got me an extra. I think I mentioned yesterday, that's why you gotta be kinda adaptive, you know? Like I seen this little hole there, I could hear the water gurgling, and I'm like, well gosh, something looks like it's going in and out of there. I mean, I could've just left these other sets, but I didn't have nothing in those. So apparently this muskrat uh, either avoided these other ones or whatever, and I caught him here in this wine set. So you gotta be a little bit adaptive sometimes to make catches. Um, you never know if I remake this this could be the one that catches all the animals here and these other ones might not do anything the baited ones won't so I think sometimes they do get wise and they will avoid the baited sets too So especially if their friends keep getting caught over and over again, but all right We'll get this guy remade and we'll be on the, on our way down this slew All right guys, so I'm just down from where I just uh, showed you where I had that muskrat cat in the blind set uh, the ice here goes out to about here so it's like I don't know 20 yards out it looks like it's pretty thick right where my sets are and it gets less out that way uh, I don't know if this one's gonna open back up tomorrow or today tomorrow like I said it's supposed to get cold but after that it's supposed to warm up so I'm gonna leave these sets here I'll probably bust a good spot of ice around them tomorrow like I did today I mean I only did a foot or two around each one today on the other side of the road the same thing but I feel like these will open back up, you know, two or three days from now. But my trap was set off on this. So my 110's right over there. My trap was set off and I thought maybe it was just the ice, but I was wrong. There's a muskrat. So sometime, sometime before we got all this ice, I apparently made a catch. So that's two in this one now. And what's that make like four for the day already? So. I'm 
ahead of yesterday by a long shot. So, all right, we'll get this guy out of here. Like I said, we're going to put it back in here, even though I'm pretty sure I won't make catch in there tonight. Uh, and then, like I said, tomorrow we'll bust a good spot of ice around this, make sure it's working good for the next few days when it warms up. Oh, man, guys, I thought I had something to show you, but turns out it's not as good as I was hoping. So from the road, I could see, see how this pole is leaning way over like this? Typically that means a catch. And then this pole here, I could see my 110 is gone, so obviously I could see something was gone there, but I actually think I got a bonus animal there, oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, I just got excited. I'm pretty sure I don't have a muskrat on that set. I don't know. We'll have to get over there and look. But yeah, so this pole is leaning way over. Typically that means you have a catch and then the animal wiggles and it moves the pole around because it's turned as well. It's turned like this. Let's pull this guy up and see if I really do have what I think I do have. I do. I got myself a mink on a carrot on a pole. What in the hell is a mink gonna eat a carrot for? It's not a big mink. I would say it's a little female. I have no idea. Like I said, it was just a carrot on the trigger like all my rest of them. I could see, I don't know how well you could see. See how his tail kind of poofs up when it's in the water? And then I could see his feet down there, like right here. Hope you guys can see that. See his feet, and then his tail is kind of puffed up too, so. I was like, wait a second, those feet don't look right. The claws are white on a muskrat, so you could see those. This, the pad of his foot is white. So I'm wondering maybe if that mink didn't mess with this set first, maybe just didn't get caught. So we're just gonna turn it back so it's aiming kinda out over the slough, out this way. I'm gonna re that guy. But yeah. <laughs> we got ourselves a mink, oh my gosh. And I've, I have a couple mink boxes out already. And I'm going to add some more out today, but I did not def plan on catching one of these in a muskrat set today. I have caught one on a foothold set like that. A couple years ago, I caught one on there. I've never caught one like this, so I guess there's a first for everything. I can't believe it. All right, we'll get this remade. I do have two sets over here by this muskrat pile. One is still working, I can see the 110 is, but we'll trudge over there, see if we got anything. Got a mink. I didn't get one all last year, and now I got one, and I wasn't really trying to get them in this set, so. All right. Well, this must be my lucky set. Uh, I'm in this uh, abandoned farmyard. You know, I caught a skunk over there and I caught a couple of raccoons behind this little granary. Over here, I got a double 220 box. And for the third time now this year, we got ourselves a skunk in there. Not a real big skunk. He doesn't have the widest, whitest stripes in the world, but looks like he flopped around a little in there. We'll, uh, get him out of there. I just want to show you what I'm using. So I either wear like my uh, Semperforce latex gloves. For a skunk like this, I hate to waste a pair of those. So these are food service gloves and I just double them. So I actually have two on each hand because all I'm going to do is literally just reset the springs on the trap, put the safeties on. I take the skunk out and I just put them. Usually if you kind of try and get their butt in there first, then you can just kind of drop the head in. And then I just tie my bag shut and I'm on my way and I just pull the gloves off and throw them away. So I don't need to waste a good pair of latex gloves just for this. Because like I said, I'm only basically touching his head and the trap. I'm not touching like anything else really here. This guy stinks too, so. All right. Second land animal of the day. I don't know. Let's hope... Uh, this other end doesn't smell like skunk quite so bad. Let's hope maybe uh, down the road I'll catch a raccoon in these sets. I know skunks breed skunks has kind of always been my theory. If you catch a skunk in a trap, 
there's a good chance you're gonna catch another skunk in the same trap, especially in these 220s. So I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but that's just kind of how it goes for me anyway. All right, we'll get him out of here and we'll move on. All right guys, so I'm down the road just a bit here. Um, I checked one, oh, where I had the skunk was the last place I checked, I guess. I forgot I had the skunk. Uh, I got eight uh, pole sets in these, in the Sioux, you know, on this side and on that side of the road over there. One was set off, but I think it was the ice. Uh, actually two were, this one, the 110 that's right here was set off too. I may have to swap that trap out. If it's set off tomorrow with nothing in there, I'm pulling it out of here. I think it was set off yesterday as well with nothing in it, but I don't know. I can't remember for sure. When you're running so many sets, it's hard to remember exactly, but I think that one was set off yesterday. And if it is again tomorrow, he'll get yanked out of here. What I got is this culvert here and I got a colony trap. So I was telling you earlier that, oh, I'm about to lose my way that I had a colony trap where the door was bent. Well, it was this one here. You could kind of see like right here where the door's got like a goofy kink in there. This door was bowed out like that far out. Yeah, uh, the first check, you know, and then there was like, it almost like they pushed the side out a little bit and then the door was bent goofy. So they kind of just squeezed out, but I feel like it would take a really big muskrat to do that, so I don't know. We'll see See if I catch a mink in that spot or this spot, to be honest with you. I'm going to put my mink box on the other end of this culvert because uh, I'm standing in water here where that end's dry. So I'm going to try and put a mink box on that end, and we'll get this guy out of here. But picking them up one at a time, it's not fast. Nothing like last year, nothing like I'd hoped for, but one at a time, we'll take it. Better than nothing. Well, let's hope this isn't the trend for the day, but, and this one may be a problem too, but uh, I'm back behind this farm place here. Uh, there's a lane goes around the corner here and it goes like this way. And then obviously where I'm parked, um, I got a coyote set here. I think two days ago I had a skunk caught in here and I, now I got another one. I mentioned this to you just a couple sets ago that skunks breed skunks. I, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, obviously, but like if I catch one, for some reason, it just seems like they just are super attracted to your set then. You know, and like, you know, I, I'll syringe pull this guy so we won't spray, hopefully. You know, so my set really doesn't tend to smell too skunky. I mean, I kind of get immune to it because you're, you know, dealing with them, but I don't really smell it that much around these sets. Like, I can't smell him right now. But, yeah, I don't know what it is, but it just seems like if I catch one skunk in a set, I mean, there's a better than average chance I'm going to catch another one in that set before I catch one in, a, like, a clean set. Um, this guy's caught by a back leg, which makes it very interesting to get your syringe pull in. By a front leg, you know, basically they got their legs stretched out. You basically go, I like to get in the middle of the chest, you know, in the front. That seems to put them down the best. But if you have to go like behind the leg, their legs stretched out and that's easy enough to do. When they're a back foot catch, no matter which way they pull away from you, the loaded end is aimed at you. So usually you end up poking them in the side um, unless you really get a standoffish one, but I really don't want to deal with this guy. All right, we'll get him uh, out of here, get the set remade, and keep chugging along. I did get one mink box out at the last uh, slough there where I had the muskrat in the colony trap. Uh, the next slough I'm going to go to, um, we're going to drop one in there. Like I said, I think I got six more in my truck. I'm going home with none today. I'm going to pile every one of them out uh, someplace. So, Well, it took me a stupid long time to get that skunk dispatched. As I suspected, because he was back foot caught, as soon as I get close to him with my syringe, he would turn around. And even when I would get him poked, I couldn't get my uh, syringe to inject it. Like plug the end of my needle up with fat. So I'd poke him and I'd push and push and push. Well, while I'm pushing, his butt was sticking at me. 
he didn't spray me that I noticed. I got the set remade. I even thought about just leaving him and coming back tomorrow, you know, let it dissipate a little bit. It did smell like skunk once I got over closer to him, but I don't know. Uh, so what I got is this little slough. It was froze over yesterday. So I pulled my two sets that I had just right over here. It wasn't that cold yesterday and it was froze over already. There's like better than a quarter inch of ice on my set. So I pulled those two. Uh, on the other side of the road, I put a mink box on basically on the other end of this culvert. But on this end, I had that colony trap in here the first day. I don't know if you can see him, but he's laying right here. I got myself another little muskrat. I've caught the three smallest muskrats I've caught all year right here in this set. Uh, they can't be coming from too far because like I said this whole sluice froze over and this one got caught coming into the culvert so I don't know I don't know where they're coming or going from but I guess a little one is better than none we'll get this guy reset and I got two more on the other side of the road and then we got a bunch of land traps to check for a bit I don't know a handful of sets down the line not that many actually um, this is a new set for me I've never actually put a set here I don't really honestly know why but I just have never taken the effort to do it um, what I got is just a, a fence line it goes out and then there's a big fence line goes that way uh, I caught that coyote yesterday right on the other end of this grove down here kind of, well actually kind of right all down to the point of that grove and I just all I did is I actually had a flat set here I don't make a lot of flat sets but I decided to make a flat set and you can see I got myself a nice red fox uh, I did catch one here that actually right on the corner of that grove last year I caught a nice fox but yeah I'm not sure I almost think I got him caught by both front feet but yeah I just I have permission to trap on that side I'm not even real sure who owns the land I'm on standing on but I just thought it's on the north side so I put uh, caster and gusto there so the wind would blow over to this side and then the fence happens to be knocked down right here in this short little stretch so the animals I mean you could see it looks like they could just walk right across anywhere they want so second fox of the day I didn't expect that people been telling me there's lots of fox running around this year so I mean that may be why I'm not catching coyotes too if there's lots of fox around typically there's not a lot of coyotes around but I don't know We'll see, this one at least got the nice white spot on his tail. Uh, we'll get this guy out of there, uh, get the set remade, and move on. Like I said, I still got a few more land traps here kind of to go in a row here, and then we'll be back to muskrat trapping. All right, guys, so I'm trying to think what I checked. Maybe a half dozen sets since I last turned you guys on. Uh, not even that many. Two coyote sets and two muskrat sets since I last turned you on. I'm to the feedlot, you know, and I've had a couple catches over there. Uh, I've had two skunks right down here. I had one there yesterday. Today we got ourselves a nice coyote. And this, this trap was set off yesterday and had two rabbit's feet in their front feet. But the rest of the rabbit was gone other than just a couple puffs of fur. So I literally did not bait this with anything else other than just stuff those rabbit feet down the hole. And the little puff of fur I stuffed in there, kind of covered it up, you know, with a little bit of like these sticks and stuff. Hoping that whoever uh, thieving, you know, took the rabbit would come back. Whether or not this is the guy or not, I don't know, but looks like an okay coyote. I had trouble here last year. So I caught seven coyotes out of this yard last year. And as much shine that's here this year, I feel like they're here again. I just haven't been lucky enough to catch one till the day. But I had really bad rubbed sh like necks in here. This guy looks okay-ish. He may be a little thin, but like they were really bad last year. Like I had that quad here, you know, four all at one time. And all four of them, I actually threw one out. He was that bad. And then the other three, were uh, pretty bad too so 
Well, we'll get this guy out of here. He wants to bark, but he just won't quite do it. We'll get this guy out of here. Have a nice mixed bag again. Got three dogs today, two fox and now this coyote. So I only got one more coyote set out. Um, and yeah, we got a bunch of water traps yet, yet to check. Uh, I'm working my way towards that. I'm going to put out some beaver sets today and that type of stuff. So and still putting mink boxes out wherever I can. So all right, I'm not sure if I even showed you guys this too yet, but it's a real long zoo. There's a big bay over this way and it goes up and then there's a little zoo across the road. Over there is where I had one set last year and I kept like literally catching every day. Again, that should have been a spot where I should have added a second set over there, but I never did. Uh, I haven't caught anything here yet, but I see this trap was set off and I could not see for the life of me my trap or that I had anything caught, but I guess I do. He's got like half of my carrot chewed off. I actually think it maybe just broke off when he uh, set the trap off, but. So I got a pole set there and then the culvert comes under the road right here and you could see the water moving through there. So I put a 110 over it and it was pushed out of the way one day, like turned. So I got it setting in there a little bit better today and it didn't move today, so. I'm gonna get a mink box setting right here somewhere. Uh, the land, it's pretty like steep down to the water here, so I'm not real sure. I may tuck it like just above this rock kind of facing this way. All right guys, so I'm making it through the line. So what I did here yesterday is I put in what I calling an otter set. I don't know nothing about really trapping otter. So I'm gonna quick show you what I have here. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to reset because I had a hard time getting it set to begin with. What I have is there's this big culvert that goes under the road um, and then there's another actually higher culvert so if this gets really deep it will run through that one up there. So there is a trail right and then right here I have a 220 set because it goes right here and it goes comes down into the water and then it goes up and through that culvert. I figured that was more of a raccoon set in case you know they're playing around because it does look like they might be coming up this where this little uh, tile is running in here. But what I had is I stuck a 220 right here and I kind of blocked this off. I took these weeds and kind of blocked it off right here. And then you can kind of see I opened this up just a little bit. So I thought, well, keep them from trying to come around this side of the rock. We're going to try and keep them coming right through the middle. And then, like I said, where I'm standing, you know, if something's coming up through here, they're going to come right here and hopefully right through my trap. So I had my trap, so it was half in the water, half out of the water with nothing really over the top of it. And then, like I said, I just stuck these weeds here as blockers. But you can see I got a big muskrat. Uh, we'll uh, get him out of here, which I'm happy for the muskrat. I did not expect any muskrats because the sewer that's out here was uh, damn near completely dry. Like there was literally a spot 10 foot around out in the middle that was still had water. Otherwise, the rest was dry. And it's a good sized sewer. So I don't know. And then this flows into a big sewer behind me here. And that's why I thought, well, maybe an otter might try and sneak up through here. Um, it's a shot in the dark. I'm not an otter trapper. I'll be the first to admit it. I know nothing about otter. I was hoping this might work, so. Caught a muskrat, I guess. Putting fur in the truck, so we'll get this remade and we'll get move on. I'm on my way down to set the beaver sets and that type of stuff, and then I have a few more to check on my way home. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 muskrat sets and one coyote set still, so. All right, we'll uh, turn you guys on if I got anything else to show you. I don't know what's going on today. Uh, this is this is so stupid. I, I don't even, I, I can't even really explain to you how dumb this is. Um, so I got a slough here. There's all kinds of muskrat huts here. I got just two, one pole and one 110 in here. So I had a 110 here and a, I got a foothold with a, uh, you know baited set there and parked on the other side of the road I got some more sets over there I put that uh, cage colony trap on the other side I have not checked any of that I thought well we'll check this side first 
I don't know. I, I'm I'm speechless. I, I I just don't even know. So that set there. You guys should be able to see the trap is still setting there. Maybe. I'm trying to get so you guys can see, but the trap is there. And on this side, I have right here, you see this black fluffy kind of streak? That is not a muskrat tail. And you kind of look at the feet. I don't know how well you can see like the feet, but I did it again twice in one day and I've never done it in my entire life and I caught another mink in a 110 baited with a carrot I'm gonna say that again I caught a mink twice now in one day in a 110 with a carrot on the trigger I don't understand this this looks like a big male. It's a big, big mink. I mean, he's he's quite a bit bigger than the other one. This one's white brown colored. The other one was pretty dark colored, but I don't even know what to say. I mean, I'm glad I got rid of them right here, especially because there's hopefully lots of muskrats on the other side I can catch and this guy won't be eating them, but I didn't plan on putting a mink box here either. And now I won't now anyway, but I'm gonna, I got one more I'm gonna put out today and that'll be it, but I don't know. I'll get this guy reset uh, and we'll check the ones on the other side of the road, I guess. I don't know, twice in one day, never done it in my life and I did it twice in one day. It's just ridiculous, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Hopefully I could catch some muskrats in this zoo now. All right, guys, I'm just on the other side of the road from where I caught that mink. No mink in my beta 110 there. I couldn't see him down there, so I pulled him up already, but there he is, caught by the back leg. He was buried down in the, uh, I don't know if you could see, but there's all kinds of like cattails just so they're under the water here. All right, we'll get this guy out of there. My uh, colony trap is just right down here, my floating colony trap, so. I hopes for that. All right, guys, so until the next zoo, there was nothing in my folding colony trap. I, I don't know. That's the best chance out of anywhere to catch one or catch anything in there because that's the most sign in that. And I seen five swimming around in there yesterday. So I caught one. There's at least four more in there. I don't know. Well, uh, see you in the next few days. I do. Uh, See, I don't know if you could see. See how it's just as claws are white? So I got a muskrat. Not a real big guy, but I got a muskrat. So a muskrat, the claws are white. The mink, the bottom of their feet, their pads are white. Sorry about the farmer right over here, but so it's real different looking when I walked up to them and then their tail is puffy where a, a muskrat has like a, thin sweet tail so all right we'll get this guy out of here i got two more on the other side of the road to check and four more on the other end of this zoo to check all right guys we're back home it's a pretty productive day to be quite honest with you i mean again not the you know mind-blowing numbers that i was getting last year but with the amount of sets i have out i don't feel like i'm doing too bad so we'll give you a quick rundown of my catch here and uh we'll get to start skinning all these guys um we'll start off i ended up with two skunks are in these two bags here uh they both kind of stink so i'm just gonna set them over there i'll actually cash them i i'll stick them back by that one over there that one's the big guy from yesterday i usually wait till i have you know like four five six seven you know a good amount of them uh before i start sucking essence out of them uh, it, it kind of ruins your syringes. Sometimes you only get like one use out of them. So if I'm going to do that, I'd rather do five skunks than just one skunk. So, uh, the essence kind of eats the rubber or swells up the rubber enough that you can't like pull it. And then eventually it'll pop off of the, uh, plunger 
And last year I had that happen and then it kind of spilled out of my syringe because it kind of jerked hard and popped out of there. So uh, we'll leave these two for another day, probably tomorrow, like I said. We'll see before the weekend, we'll get them taken care of. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of go down the line here. So this one here is the first fox I caught. Uh, and then I brought him home and dropped him off here because I thought I forgot my phone. But like I said, his tail is completely healed. So, you know, they should have a nice white tip like that guy does. But he's he's quite a bit smaller, but he's quite a bit darker red. You know, you look at how nice and, you know, he ain't red red, but you look at how pale that one is, you know. The difference in color is quite a bit different. You know, so in theory, that guy there should be worth a little bit more than this one, even though this one is a bigger bigger fox. This is the second fox I caught. He was caught by both front feet in that flat set. And then we got this coyote. You know, he's got a nice tail on him. I did it, try to explain when he was in the trap a little bit, but I don't know if you could tell like how like silver he's got back here. But as you get up here to the neck, he like loses all that. Like he's already kind of missing a little bit of his under wool and a little bit of his uh, guard hairs up here. Not bad, not nothing, nothing like they were last year for that spot. And it may be that he's just a little dirty or whatever that it's just not showing, but he looks a little bit off on the neck area. Um, again, I'm, I wanna get rid of the coyotes there anyway because I'm, I'm, I'm helping the farmers within a you know mile or more radius around that farm. So um, glad to get him. That's number two for the year. Uh, fi finally getting into some coyotes. I don't have a lot of sets. I got 20 sets out right now. So um, I can't expect to have bumper crops. You know, when I had two fox and a coyote and one skunk in, in coyote sets. So four out of... Uh, yeah, four out of 20, so 20% 20 of my, uh, you know, coyote sets had animals in them today. So you can't really expect much better than that. I mean, I'd like to think if I would have had 50 out, I'd have had the same average, but I know that's not true either. So, um, and then we'll go down the line here. So best day of the year for muskrats, uh, ended up with 10 total today. So not a bumper crop by any means. I do have a few that are quite a bit smaller today. My average is smaller. You know, got one real big one there and that one's real big. You just one didn't want to hang there very good, so. But we talked a little bit, I tried to point it out. So when they're under the water, you could see the white spots and that's their claws. And then their tail is real thin and solid. It's not fluffy. But when I had these mink in there, you kind of look the claws aren't what's white, it's the little paws, the pads on their feet is what's white. And then their tail, when it was under the water, is all poofy, you know, because it's actually hair on the mink tail, where this is just like skin, like a beaver tail, you know, scaly. But yeah, and then the two surprise catches of the day. I do have four, I had four mink boxes out, uh, none of them were messed with. And I ended up catching these two guys in baited muskrat sets. You know, they had a carrot on them, on a 110. I, I just don't understand it. So a couple bonus mink today, I guess. I mean, I don't know how else to look at it. I did notice that like this, I'm assuming this one's a male, but he's got some nice white on his belly. This one here is pretty much brown, the whole thing. And he's got a little bit of white like on his chin, but. Yeah, a couple bonus mink today. I don't quite, again, I don't quite understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why would a mink go up and try and bite on a carrot? I mean, curiosity maybe killed the cat and it might've killed the mink too, I guess, today. So I've been using that same muskrat set for like a half a dozen years now and never even considered that I would catch a mink in it. I did one time, two years ago, catch a mink in a foothold baited set, muskrat set, uh, in a little creek. Uh, I only ended up catching one muskrat out of there that year, and then like the next day I had a really nice buck mink in there. 
But otherwise, I would never consider catching a mink in a muskrat trap, a baited with a carrot. It just makes no sense. Um, yeah, so I did put out a couple beaver sets, some uh, mink sets, or seven mink boxes, I guess. A uh, couple raccoon sets. So where the beaver house where I thought I had beaver and I trapped them this spring, I put ended up putting two beaver sets in there. And then I put the raccoons, I have a trail running along the edge of that slough. I put a 220 on either side of all my sets, hoping that I will catch all the, or catch the raccoons before they get to my beaver sets or my mink box. Uh, so I put a, a 220 on each side of them. They're like 50 feet apart, all my sets. Basically drive down the road, some are each direction, you know, some are east of the road, some are west of the road, and the slough, it, you know, is flooded over the road. And then I put four muskrat sets out, two kind of one direction to another, and then put a mink box kind of right in the middle. So right there, it took me like 45 minutes to set all that stuff up. The beaver traps take me the longest. Um, the muskrat sets and the mink box and raccoon sets took me like probably 10 minutes total. And it took me the rest of the time just to make the beaver sets. Um, and they're not really that fancy beaver sets that greatly done. They're just, you know, they'll catch me a beaver if he comes over there. But, but yeah, so I'm going to make one stop tomorrow. I can literally check all that, get out of my truck, make one little loop so I can see all my traps and be back in my truck in under a minute, probably if I don't have any catches. So I want to make stops like that. I want to catch everything. So I got raccoons, mink, muskrat, and beaver all in one stop. And I would put a coyote set there as well, but the field wasn't worked up. I thought it was, but it, sh it was not. It's a bean field, and I'm assuming they're going to come and work it at some point. So if they get that done, I'll drop a coyote set in along the edge there as well. Uh, and I did find one more Sioux that has a beaver house in it that's actually not far from that one. Uh, I can see the beaver house from the road. They got corn stalks piled up on top of it. So I'm going to try and drop in a... Uh, a foot foothold on a caster mound tomorrow and just see uh if i get a south wind it'll be perfect for that and i think it's actually supposed to turn southerly tomorrow so we'll see I, if i catch one there i'll pull my set out of there i'm not going to leave it there forever but um maybe like i said if i catch one there i'll pull it just so i could catch a beaver this year and be done i don't want to like trap out that entire house or anything by that but Otherwise, I did. Uh, I picked up four muskrat sets that were in sloughs that were all completely froze over already. Um, and then the trouble is, is they're going to freeze a little bit harder again tonight because it's supposed to get down like in the low 20s tonight. But then once it starts warming up, it's not supposed to get below freezing for like the next five days or so. So if the sloughs are still partly open or mostly open now, they should open back up here even in a day or so. But the ones that are completely froze over already, they're just going to put on that much more ice tonight. You know, the ones where I pulled had a quarter inch plus of ice on them. They could have a half an inch ice or more by tomorrow. And it's going to take them like three or four days just on thaw. And by that time, I'm probably going to be done or uh, muskrat trapping. So it wasn't worth leaving them there and letting them ice in. If they do open up in the next day or two, I can always put my sets back in there. But if the sous froze over, it doesn't pay to leave them stand there. I don't have to stop to check them, that type of stuff. So, And I put out uh, two more muskrat sets and another slough. So I'm getting a few more sets out as we go. Hopefully uh, in the next day or two, I, I can start getting a few more coyote sets out. They're starting to work some of the fields, even though they're muddy. They're starting to work them up. I still won't be able to drive across them, but there's places I can walk to but I need the fields to be worked before I put my coyote sets there. So I'm not saying I'm going to get 50 coyote sets out this year, but if I can, you know, keep adding a few every day, like I said, I mean, I got a skunk, two fox, and a coyote in the 20 I have out. If I get even to 30, I maybe could add another, you know, another skunk or raccoon or what, you know, one more animal maybe in those other 10 sets. So, and, you know, every animal counts when it comes to, paying for gas and that type of stuff so all right we'll let you guys go i appreciate you guys watching um if you don't mind tell a friend we're all one big community here uh 
you know, if you like the type of content I'm putting out, tell a friend to watch as well. You know, and if they got questions about anything, you just tell them to leave them in the comments. Goes for you guys too. Leave your questions in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Otherwise, we'll see you out on the line tomorrow.